Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture is about um, probability distributions, uh, in particular discrete, discrete probability distribution. Uh, this is part of, uh, of the advanced course of mathematics for teenagers, for high school students, uh, which is presented on unizor.com and that's where I suggest you to um, watch this particular lecture because uh, the website has the comments, notes basically, which um, uh, add something significant to whatever I'm talking about uh, and it's always beneficial to uh, read the notes after or before um, you listen to the lecture. Alright, so back to discrete probability distributions. First of all, what do we mean when we are talking about distribution? Well, we can distribute money, we can distribute weight among certain things. Well, probability is a measure which is very much like money, like weight, like length or whatever else. Uh, so we can distribute the probability and uh, in basic uh, finite case, what we usually have, we have a, a sample space which basically models our random experiment. This sample space contains certain number of elementary events, n elementary events in the finite case, which basically models uh, the n different outcomes, possible outcomes of, uh, of the random experiment. Now, with each elementary event, uh, we have certain non-negative constant uh, which is called its probability and its probability basically means uh, it's a limit of the frequency of occurrence of a particular event which means if we will continue conducting our random experiment um, uh, under identical conditions um, infinite number of times or actually we conduct this experiment a uh, certain number of times and the number is increasing limitlessly. Um, so the ratio of the number of occurrences of a particular event to the number of experiments would have a limit which is actually its probability. So um, the only requirement for these uh, probabilities is that their sum is equal to 1. Um, so we always have the probability measured as something uh, which is a, a, a unit, a, a one, a combined weight of one, and we are distributed these ratios among different elementary events. So this set of probabilities of each elementary event is actually the probability distribution. We are distributing the weight of one among different elementary events, like one half to this, one quarter to this, etc. Okay, so this is the probability distribution in case we are talking about uh, sample space or random experiment, etc. Now, what if we are talking about random variable? Well, random variable is a function which is defined on these numeric uh, on, on, uh, on these uh, elementary events. It's a numerical function, so the value of C can be either E1 or E2 or e, e, E3 or etc. or En. So the value of, well, let's do it differ differently. Let's put it. It's a function, which means on every case elementary event, it has certain numerical value. Let's say it's Xk doesn't really matter. Now, what can we say about this particular random variable? If it takes the value of xk when uh, our random experiment um, ends up in elementary event ek, it means that the probability of our random variable to be equal to xk equals to the probability of elementary event Ek, which is Pk. So, 
basically the same set of probabilities which we have defined for our elementary events defines actually the distribution of the probabilities for our random variable among its values. So the value of xk is taken with the probability pk. So this is also a distribution of probabilities. So all we are talking about right now is terminology. So what is distribution of probability? Well, in the finite case, it's just a set of um, probabilities. Each of them is non-negative, and some of them is equal to 1. And they, well, they define the distribution, all right? Okay, now, why do we call it discrete distribution? Well, because these values are separated from each other. So it's not like all the real numbers. There is no such thing as, as a separation between two consecutive real numbers. There are no, no separation there. Basically, have a separation of zero, if you wish. But in case of integer numbers, like we have, for instance, n, um, finite numbers. Well, if you have n finite numbers, then there is always a difference, some distance between them. So these are separated from each other, and that's why we call them discrete. <coughs> now, this is a finite case. How about infinite case? Well, exactly the same thing. We are talking about discrete or probability distributions if, even if this number of uh, elementary events uh, is infinite, we still can have some distance between consecutive um, members. Now, in what cases it's possible? Well, for instance, it's possible if we have, um, for instance, a certain countable number, infinite but countable number of um, elementary events. And here is uh, the experiment. Consider my Elementary events are natural numbers. Infinite but countable number of elementary events. Now, our probability distribution, You know the requirements, right? It should be non-negative, and some should be equal to zero. Uh, sorry, to one. And there are infinite number of these probability distributions, so they cannot be like one half each of them, right? But what can be done is the following: p1 is equal to one half, p2 is equal to one quarter, p3 is equal to one eighth, etc. Pn is equal to one over two to the power of n, etc infinite number of probabilities. Remember geometric progression, infinite geometric progression? This is the example of it, right? Now, what's the sum of them? P1 plus P2 plus etc. plus Pn plus etc. to infinity. This is one half plus one quarter plus one half, one eighth plus etc. plus one over two to the nth, etc. And what is it? It's equal to 1. Remember? First we take 1 half, then 1 quarter, then 1 eighth, then 1 sixteen, etc., etc. This is an infinite geometric progression, and its sum is equal to 1. If, if somebody forgot what geometric progression is, return to one of the lectures. I do actually explain it in one of those. All right. So, this is an example of um, the finite or infinite but countable probability distributions, which we can call discrete. Now, what's very useful in many cases is, is to uh, present graphically this distribution of probabilities. And in a discrete case, it's actually very easy to do. Here is how. Back to our uh, original definition. Okay. Here is our sample space with elementary events and the corresponding probabilities. And sum of these probabilities equals to 1. 
Now, what can we do graphically? Here it is. We have n different elementary events. So I will put numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, n. Now, let's say this is 1. Now, between 0 and 1, I will build a rectangle. The width is 1, obviously, but the height is P1. P1 is less than 1, right? So it's something like this. Then, between 1 and 2, I will put a rectangle with the height P2. P3, P4, P5, etc. Now, some of the heights, or if you wish, which is actually better, some of the areas is equal to 1. So, now, why the area is equal to 1 uh, as well as the sum of the heights? Well, because the width of each uh, rectangle is equal to 1, right? So we multiply the width, which is 1, by the height. So the height numerically is equal to area. So the area under this staircase, if you wish, is equal to 1. So we can change the probabilities. One can go higher, another could go lower, but in any case, whatever we change, the sum of the area under this staircase is always equal to 1. And this graphically shows that in this particular case, the probability is distributed in such a way that the highest is uh, the first event, elementary event. Now, what if our uh, experiment is rolling the dice. We have six different probabilities and each of them is the same, is equal to 1, 6, right? So in this particular case we will have 5, 6 and we will have all of them of the same height equals to 1, 6. This would be area. And the total area of these six rectangles is still equal to 1. Now, how about our example when we used to have this? Infinite number of elementary events. And the probability is one half, one quarter, one eighth, etc., one to the two to the power of n, etc. How, in this case, the probability distribution uh, will look graphically? Well, this is actually something which I was trying to do the first time. This is one half, one quarter, one eighth. Each one is half the size of the previous one. So this is my probability distribution. And it goes infinitely, actually, right? Uh, but the sum under this letter is still is equal to 1. By the way, this is a very interesting um, random variable when you define So the value of the random variable of the event e, e, e i, which is actually the number i, is exactly the number i. So we have the random variable which takes the value i with a probability equals to 1 over 2 to the power of i. Now, this is an interesting random variable we just built the graphic, uh, uh, we have built the graph of uh, probability distribution of this particular variable. Now, what's wrong with having uh, a countable, infinite but countable number of values? Well, basically nothing. Um, 
you can, for instance, uh, calculate the mathematical expectation of this variable. It's not part of like discrete probability distribution topic, but I mean, it's still an interesting thing. I actually suggest in the notes as, a, as, a, as an exercise to have uh, uh, the calculation of the um, expected value of this particular random variable. You know the expected variable is the value times its probability, another value times its probability, etc. Now in this case, the value is 1 and probability is 1 half. The value is 2 and probability is 1 quarter. The value is 3 and probability is 1 eighth, etc. The value is n and probability is to the power of two to the power of n, etc. Now this is my expectation of our C. How to find out what this particular sum is uh, supposed to be calculated? Well actually there is a little trick um, and here it is. Um, if you call it S, okay, this sum. Now what about S divided by 2? What is it? Well it's 1 over 1 quarter but let me just shift it 1 over 1 quarter, then 2 over 8, etc. And that would be n minus 1 over 2 to the n, etc. Right? If you subtract one from another, you will have 1 half s, s minus s over 2 you will have one half two fourths minus one fourth is equal to one fourth three eighths minus two eighths one eighths etc etc n over two to the n minus n minus one so it would be one over two to the n etc and we know that this is equal to one right this is a plain geometric progression so s minus s over two is equal to one from which we de de uh, derive that s is equal to half of s is equal to so s is equal to 2. So the expectation of this variable, random variable, is 2. So it's a normal uh, thing. I mean, there is nothing wrong with uh, um, introduction of our um, infinite but countable number of um, elementary events and probabilities probabilities are still separated from each other and this is why it's called discrete so this is an infinite discrete distribution all right <clears throat> that's it for today next lecture will be about continuous distribution which is a little bit more difficult um, so that's it for today uh, try to read again the notes for this lecture on unisor.com i strongly recommend you to do it that's it thanks very much and good luck <laughs>